give us what we need. Hey, our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We, we got, got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power. 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 We got to fight the powers that be. Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. My name is Alton D. Walden III. I am the founder of the Black Community Empowerment Group, along with my wife, the co-producer of the group, which is Dana Walden. And I started this group by way of the oppression of our people, the things I've experienced in my life growing up. Unfortunately, I was called a nigger growing up. I was born and raised in Rochester, New York. I am a victim of my society. I was in a community where I grew up where it was a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, uh, unfortunately poor education in regards to who we are, in regards to receiving the financial support that we needed for proper education, in regards to grants. All right, uh, how about receiving support from the system in regards to uh, athletic scholarships and uh, dealing with academic scholarships? I recognize that the knowledge in some of the communities around me is lacking that information. I notice a lot of our people are not doing good in their health and I began to recognize myself personally that my health was bad. And after listening to Queen of Four, after listening to Dr. Sabi, I changed my diet and I'm still alive today. I was unfortunately on my way to an early grade. And then I also looked at the financial dilemma that a lot of our people are having. As we all know that when you go to Whole Foods, we all know you need monies to be able to purchase uh, the non-GMO products and of course you need monies to be able to uh, establish a business and a lot of us of course are not born into wealth. As we all know the reason for that being is because of us being brought over here as slaves. And we started from the bottom. Now some of us are at the top. Some are still uh, trying to get to the top. Some of us are still at the bottom. Trying to at least get to the middle so then they can get to the top. And what I did notice is the systematic oppression of our people by way of gerrymandering, by the way of gentrification, by the way of redlining and also the laws that were put in place years ago that were totally ignored by those who were in position of power in the political arena. Just want to use this for instance George Washington became president in 1789 and the Emancipation Proclamation written by Abraham Lincoln was established in September the 22nd of 1862, the preliminary. And it stipulated that if the southern states didn't cease their rebellion by January 1, 1863, then the proclamation would go into effect. Now, let's look at the time frame of 1789 to 1862, you're dealing with a total of 73 years within that time frame because Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president, you had a total of 15 presidents prior to the Emancipation Proclamation being established that were the so-called spiritual well-mannered, solid, Christian-believing individuals. And I have a problem with that when 
this figure that is is noted as Jesus, one who came to establish love and peace and unity, they took upon themselves to claim that they're the good white Christian, and they took the Bible and they handled the word deceitfully and they manipulated the minds of the slaves that were brought here they abused them they raped them long story short they mistreated them but they claimed to be a people of good morals and when someone fought back they were claimed to be troublemakers and I think about a bully when I think about this and it's like somebody that's being bullied and that person fights the bully back because they're tired of being bullied and then the bully calls them a troublemaker because they're fighting them back because they're troubling them it's amazing how our leaders who fought for our rights were considered to be troublemakers and of course if any melanated person didn't go against the authority of the bigots that were in position during that time they were called the good niggas because they didn't rebel they didn't go against being treated inhuman and so they were treated less than human they were treated like animals because we all know that you don't pay a horse to do work. You feed the horse so it can stay alive, so it will continue to do the work. And that's exactly the way we were treated as human beings like animals. We were whipped. We were made to work until we died with no compensation. But these are supposed to be the individuals that's supposed to be so civilized and so debonair and so well mannered, my good fellow, but yet they raped our women. They took our ancestors from plantation to plantation to breed like one would do a dog. And treated them like stock. But yet, they continuously portray themselves as being people that are so civilized. Yet they fight against human trafficking today when it comes to bringing other individuals across the borders and being slowed into, into prostitution and, and all of those things are supposed to be wrong today however we have to take a walk back in history and how we got into the state that we are today and it evolved from the mentality that was instilled in us when our forefathers were enslaved and they were robbed of their language they were robbed of their heritage they were beat into thinking that they could never be anything more than a field hand they were beat into thinking that the only thing that they would ever be would be breeders. And when they ran from this cruel slave master and they were caught, they were punished as if though what they did was so wrong because they wanted to be free. And then these Caucasian bigots lynched them burned them and they raped them but yet they're supposed to be so moral and they made sport of it there are numerous photos you can google these photos lynchings and you will see the Caucasians standing there around the bodies of the people that they lynched and they were smiling about it 
when you look at the videos of the marches during the time of Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, you see when the dogs are biting them, you see when the police are beating them, you see when they're getting water holes, you see when they're being slapped down and gunned down in the streets and the Caucasian biggest are standing on the side smiling, making sport of innocent people being violated. This is what they do. This is what they do. And then when you deal with segregation, When you deal with segregation, you look at how they isolated us, and now we're talking about hyper-segregation, whereby you deal with a geographical location that separates the races from one another. And even the word race itself, we know, is made up because we as a people and our tribes never looked at one another as a race we never looked at each other as a color if we spoke to one another in our tribal tongues it would be that of a tribal tongues where these words that you use that come from a european language does not even exist So this is to show you that colonialism has occurred and that the evidence is also the way that we dress because if you were to go to your country and it has not been influenced by modernization, you will find that dealing with the Adamant tribe, even dealing with the Zulu tribe, even dealing with the Ashanti tribe, those who are not involved in modern, modern day civilization, you will come to find that they dress in their ancient garbs that have been passed down to them for centuries, but yet because of their exposure, they're considered to be indecent. But in our country, being that this is not our land, and being that we taken upon this mindset that it's improper, it's indecent. And in this country, if you walk around like that, it's called indecent. But if you go to your land, you will see that what the European has deemed as inappropriate is our way of life. This is how you know that our minds have been persuaded by the European dominating powers of the world. This is how you know. Because you don't speak your language. You don't dress in your traditional garb. You don't think the way that you would think if you were raised in your country amongst your own tribe. Polygamy, for instance, you have some that are called out of sin. But within your tribe, that's a way of life. It's not a sin. Who taught you that that was a sin? Where did that book come from? What year was that book constructed in? And how long did our people exist before that book came into being? Was it civilization? already established before the book even came into being but yet you will let a man persuade you to believe that you have to turn to a book in order for you to learn morals when it was our tribal leaders when it was our elders in our families that taught us to respect their elders and taught us order and taught us discipline if we had no discipline that how did Hannibal win the wars, Hannibal of Carthage, how did he win the wars that he won? If we had no discipline, if we had no order, how did he win? 
How, how did man survive morally? How did they interact with one another dealing with sociology now? How did they interact with one another prior to this book coming into being? My friend, I say unto you that the creator, the supreme creator, the one who created heaven and earth and the planets and the stars and all things, put it in us to be able to know what's right and what's wrong. Even by nature itself, I will prove it to you, even by nature itself, man's sexual organs. A woman's sexual organs show you that homosexuality, which is a Greek word, means like the same, all right, is wrong. But we feel like we have to go to a book to find these things out. Do you not know even a plug has a receptacle, and if you try to put two, club, two, two plugs together, there will be no action. There will be no power because the plug was designed to go into the receptacle. And then there's no energy. How can we reproduce if we're sleeping with the same kind? Just by the seed of man, just by the egg and the ovary of the woman tells you and shows you scientifically with some of you Use a Bible verse and quote that and say falsely called science. But science is the study of nature. It's observation of that which is physical. And this is how we get revelation by you just studying nature. If you look even at an ox that's being attacked by a lion. If you watch National Geographic and you watch how a, a lion it, 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 when it attacks the, 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 the baby ox and, and amongst the, 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 the I, I would say for the lack of a better term right now, I would say the tribe, if you will, okay, the flock, okay, and you see that lion try to attack that baby ox, if you watch it, you'll see they, 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 they perform a 360 around that ox to protect its own. So why are we doing what we're doing is what we're doing is, is we're establishing a protection around our own from the lion, from that beast that would try to kill us and slay us. And this is what we're doing is protecting ourselves. That's all it is. This is the reason why we say by black. Because we got to protect our own. for tuning in to Black Community Empowerment, where your mental and physical and financial well-being is our concern. And the purpose of these videos is to find the solutions to the cultural problems that is plaguing us. Thank you.